What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. Hold up, I'm up, I'm up, having fun with my friends. Singing. No one, no one's listening anymore. <laughs> oh, that was rough. That was terrible. Rough. Welcome to the Spitballers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, breaking news. I forgot a belt today. Oh, it's been a delight watching him struggle with his pants all the live long day. I believe last time I saw you trying to correct the problem, you took an extension cord <laughs> and tied your front two yeah, yeah. loops together while the, uh, it wasn't, an, it was a power yeah, he strip. Did. It was, and he threaded through and then he was just, he was ready for electricity. <laughs> he was that's, ready to get plugged in. That's true. I mean, th- it was kind of a perfect storm today because there's one part like, okay, if I forgot a belt. Because we work out in the morning and then come in to do the show. We shower here at the office. And, you know, this is a rarity. But if it happened, these were not the pants to happen with. Are these not new pants? They are older pants. Well, I mean, uh, congratulations. I mean, you're talking about working out. Your old pants, they don't fit anymore. All right, let's spin this in the right direction. Yeah. Okay, all right. You're the one who's, you're going to be like. By the end of the day, I'll be showing off my chicken legs. Yeah, when you. When the officer writes you up for indecent exposure, yes. you just say, officer. It's not my fault. I've you, been you working out. My, <laughs> I've been <laughs> working out. Talk to my out. trainer. <laughs> uh, yeah, That's my old pants. The easiest out of, of that ticket. Look, officer, I've been, I've been working out. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this, is, this is really awesome. I forgot my belt. <laughs> yeah, my old pants, they require no belt. No, no they, they don't. They cannot button. The tightening? What yeah, did we they, just they have can- a... They just they can't zip or button because they were when I was a smaller man. The way we just had a show about the some people out there at a certain BMI, they're able to do yes. the button then the zip, but but the zip but, and then the butt, or and then some do the zip and the butt. I'm just saying that now the, where, these pants, I could do whatever I want. What is your? I can do all the zip and the button before I pull them up. Let's put what it that is way. your <laughs> stance on when you have personally fatted out of pants? Oh, that's because tough. look, I've. It is my, the my weight has been all over the place. I've I've had highs, I've had lows, and you never quite know what to do. It's all when you're like I love those pants. It's all a matter of the price you paid for the pants. That's one hundred percent what it is. I have a closet okay. full of, of expensive old hundred dollar pants <laughs> that don't fit, and I'm like, well, someday I <laughs> might right. get back. I love how we pretend that's the motivation. You're like, oh, those good jeans I used to wear all the time. I'm gonna get back in them. That's that's the ticket. That's the the motivation. You ever, du- key you I ever need. dust them off? You ever go in there and shake them out a little bit? No, but every now and then, what happens? Like, let's say life's getting crazy. Uh, family's got so many events going on. Uh, laundry's running low. I go in and I'm like, oh, and I start looking through all these pants, Someday. and I'm like, no, oh, those are thirty fours. No, those are thirty fours. Dang it, these are thirty fours. You should give None me your these- pants, man. Yeah, well, that you're a little problems. You're a little taller. You'd be a little high water <laughs> on you, but they're really nice high waters. <laughs> I need to get some uh, what fly fishing boots. Wear them with those. I really do. You're right. I just need to find someone that's my height that wears size thirty four pants that I know that's a friend and say, "Here you go. Oh, let me bless you with my yeah. with my old." Pants. I I recently Maria condoed the the closet. And I came upon... Now, came, for those that don't know, that's the... That's the tidying up from Netflix. I went through. Yeah. I was sparking joy. I was finding all this stuff yeah, that Japanese I the Japanese tidying expert. Yes. And I found this pair of... Well, first off, I found several pairs of pants that were tagged. That, that uh, the <laughs> motivational tactic did not work. But I found one in particular. It was these brown corduroy pants. Oof. And I bought these when I was, like, at my fittest. I mean, I had... I had P ninety X my way, and I like I weighed like you guys, you you know me. I weigh one eighty five ish right now. I weighed one sixty. I mean, I was thin, and I bought these pants. Did I know, and I didn't fit in them back then. <laughs> yeah. But I have carried these pants around for ten plus did you, years. Did, did they spark joy, or are they on the way out? Oh, they. I I threw them on, and I went. I grabbed the edges. You know, to, oh like, man, we're gonna suck in. We're gonna see if we can make this make this happen. 
I almost lost my legs. <laughs> I almost detached them so from they, my body. Just oh, they, the, so the pants jo- have been destroyed. They were cut yeah, off. Of jaws your body. of life, <laughs> life related. They did not button. They just, they just hurt me. Andy, Mike, and Jason here with the Spitballers podcast. Would you rather life advice in a draft today on the show? Al Borland is here. Al, say hello. Hello. Uh, That's yeah. about as good as Al. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, Al, if you want to put on a few, maybe Jason's pants. <laughs> They would could be, be yours. They would be I was very, actually going to raise my hand. I'm a 34, and I think we're the same height. So oh, I, I could get yes. some free jeans. Wait, on all right. Hold, on, well, hold, well, hold, hold, hold up. You guys are blowing. You're the same height as Jason? Yeah. No. I, I, no. That, when I look at them, I say they seem about the I'm, same height. How tall are you, Al? 5'8". I should, I should rephrase. When I look, How dare you? How you're dare five eight? you? You're 5'8"? I'm 5'11". Oh. How <laughs> dare you, sir? <laughs> Oh, the uh, height you insult! Get nothing. You, I'm gonna break into your house and take a pair of pants away for that comment. Like, they won't be high waters, though. No, they won't. They'll just be dragging on the That's, ground. The funny thing about guys is, like, if someone looked at me, like, "What do you weigh?" Like, two twenty. You know, like they they overshoot him. No, no, man. I'm like no one ninety. Whatever. Doesn't That's matter to me. If you look at me and say, "What are you five eleven? How <laughs> dare you? Yeah, I am six feet tall. And I am a grown up. <laughs> How dare you take an inch away from my height? That that is a Jason real was thing. Real unhappy. For, for, I mean, I I genuinely was waiting for you to say five eleven. When you said five eight, I was <laughs> stunned. I was like, you think we're the same height? And multiple people. We work together every day. Look, there are people. Here's how I relate to life. I'm I'm almost six three. Uh, there are there are people that are my height that I respect. And then there are those, th- and then and then there's You're the people, heightest. and the rest of the people are just they're just down there. They're just shorter. I don't know whether they're five eight, five nine, five ten, five. It don't matter. You're all down there. That's why you look the same height to me. Yeah, like, that's how I look on all you guys with those LBs too. I'm like, oh, you guys down there in your one yeah, hundreds. That's your- fine. How old were you, Jay, when you hit five eleven? I was I I was probably fourth like grade eight. 18, 19. 18? It was oh, so. Okay. How long did you hold on hope that you were going to round up and hit that six four? Until at least another seven or eight years. <laughs> uh, I mean, because I had a bet with my mother. I had from when I was like oh. ten years old a fifty dollar bet <laughs> that I would hit six foot. This was like I bet her that I would do it. Did you pay she, out on that bet? I did not pay out on oh, that. Oh, shiesty. <laughs> how how tall is your dad? My dad is probably five ten, five nine. Oh, so you got. And how old is Papa Skids? Or how, old how, is t- he? <laughs> how tall is Papa Skids? Uh six foot, six foot one. Yeah, I have the, I have that. My dad is like six one, six two. So Are he's you? he's just above me. He's above you. It's so infuriating. He will shrink. They all shrink. <laughs> oh, and when he shrinks, then I will lord it over him. <laughs> If you have some questions You're for the show, we are listening on social media at Spitballers Pod, the website spitballerspod.com, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes. We appreciate your reviews. In fact, we read them on the show. Review Asaurus Rex. This one comes in from Rage M. Almost got into trouble with my boss because of you guys. It's five nice. stars. It says, <laughs> nice. 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 I listen to the Spitballers podcast while at work. Obviously, I wear earphones. I laughed out loud because of King Triton (laughs) flopping on the ground of the Coliseum. Everyone in the office heard me. My boss tried calling me on my desk phone, but I couldn't hear it Uh (laughs) ringing because I was wearing my earphones. She had to come to my desk to see what was going on. And when I explained that I was listening to a podcast, she asked which podcast... And when I said spitballers, she walked away smiling and said she listens to us too. What? Woo, yeah. Thank goodness. Wow. So let this, uh, l- listen, if you're afraid to listen at work, don't be. Your boss listens. I mean, it's statistically proven. See, I was going to say just make sure your boss, you go introduce your boss oh, to that's, the spitballer. Yeah, proactive or yeah. reactive. Either one's going to work. Either so way, they're listening. As you're listening and subscribing. <laughs> Please hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get into Would You Rather. Would you rather? All right, would you rather get a small paper cut every time you picked up paper or bite your tongue Oh no! every time you sat down to eat? Is that oh, so? Wait to read it. 
in specificity, you only when you're sitting down to eat, you bite your tongue. Yeah, so would, so you have a bit tongue while you eat. So this includes snack time. Yeah, if you're sitting down to eat, yeah. Okay. Now wow. what if but so paper cuts are 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 real? They're rascally. Now here's yeah. the thing: they're terrible. <laughs> when you hear oh you real bite, rapscallions <laughs> those paper cuts. When you hear oh you bite your tongue, we all think oh that's the worst. Am I right? Like biting yes. your tongue, that's the worst. Yes. But the reason that we're so much more up in arms against biting your tongue over paper cuts is because it's probably been a while since we've had one. Because a paper, paper cut? cuts are the, so much worse than biting your tongue on an individual bait. Like, they suck, and they can suck for days, and you but can't... But that's how mouth sores are. Yeah, I mean, you it, bite your tongue, you can get a little canker. I bite my tongue every third meal, and most of the time... You don't bite your tongue enough, if you ask. <laughs> oh! I see what you did there. Um No, uh, and and it hurts for a second, and then I go on with did my you meal. Not go, you didn't learn how to eat? Yeah, you're, you you don't you your bite is clearly not very strong. You ever huh? been around a toddler like my my daughter? Every every once in a while she eats her finger because she's putting the food in and she chews she bites her finger. Good. Jason knows about that life. Well, I'm yeah, just saying, I don't like, bite my finger. So you don't bite your finger. It's been you, years since I've done that. But no, you bite but, your tongue. Biting your tongue is absolutely the he's worst. He's an aggressive eater. I, that's my issue. It's not rawr, that I, it's not that I've got like an oversized tongue or I don't know how to eat. <laughs> it's that sometimes. I get a little hangry, and I need my foods. No tongue will get in the way of that. Immediately, and I'm in the middle of bite three before I start bite one, and my tongue is course two on that platter. <laughs> the, the, you and you alone, Jason. I hope you no. followed. The biting of the tongue is worse, and it could just be my actual chomp action. My, my you got some fierce canines? I Apparently, because Ooh. my wife frequently will... Uh, comment on the loudness of my chewing this is not mouth open this is just sure <laughs> no no, no everyone mouth open. knows you chew with your mouth open mike but i i think it's i i i chew hard i bite hard so when i get my tongue i eat rocks <laughs> when i get my tongue i one it hurts terribly two i i now know the future that you're gonna bite it again for another week i will bite my tongue or the, my cheek, like three more times. The cheek is so much worse than the tongue. The tongue you bite. It's okay, resilient. so switch this to cheek. Switch this to cheek. Oh, I can't handle the cheek. Cheek bite. or paper cut? I uh, give me give me the paper cut over the cheek. All right, oh. because the cheek doesn't had- go away, and the cheek you can't as easily avoid. Once you've got the sore, once you got the lump in there. It's just you, that's, you, yeah, that's what I'm you're doing the thing about. where you're like trying to blow your cheeks apart before you take your bite. Like <laughs> <You're-> <laughs> it's the absolute. First worst. of all, have you ever gotten a paper? paper cut on your tongue mm. I have, on your actually. tongue yeah well, yeah like licking an envelope yeah oh i guess you can. wow but when's the last time you licked an envelope it's been a minute <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite Wait, a you while. don't email well it's just oh man think about those those people back in the 50s first of all i'm had surprised to lick envelopes mike i honestly i'm surprised that you can bite your tongue because i'm surprised you chew your food at all oh I, when we're in public yes. mike needs to you need to do something where you tell them to bring your food in in timed portions so that we don't feel like idiots around you here's what's crazy that still wouldn't work yeah because i would, I would still be done literally yesterday we were out at a restaurant called sauce you ordered a a, a salad and a side of mm-hmm. um what was it broccoli and macaroni and, and, cheese, and cheese whatever yeah, yeah. and how late did that side come it was it's it's probably a eight, way too late for Mike. Yeah, I know he was very minutes. unhappy. Eight I was ten minutes. displeased. I mean, you were done with that <laughs> so far in advance of me finishing my meal and Andy finishing his meal, and you got it ten minutes after we started. But that's just, I mean, that's neither here nor there. You've got sharp canines, yes. probably from your teenage phase when you shaved them down to be a vampire. Yeah, that's very, very possible. <laughs> when you do the, the, the tongue bite, I don't know if everyone does this. Do you check for blood every time? No. Oh, on the tongue bite? Yeah. Like with a like a napkin? The f- no, no, I've the, done it. The, the finger. Oh, the finger. I check it. I have check every time. So you do you don't even bother? No, it's just, You're, just so common. I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't bite my tongue ever. I bite my cheek every once in a while, but I've never I haven't been my tongue in like I mean Really? Yeah, I figured out how to eat when I was 4 or 5 and it just really hasn't happened again. Oh, all right. I'm, I, so I think I, Andy doesn't realize he chews with his mouth open. <laughs> So, which somehow would take your tongue out of the equation. Yeah, if you open your mouth, you know how what happens. The tongue shrinks back. Yep. Uh, I will take the 
I'm going to take the paper cut. I'm taking the paper cut as well. I'm going to take the tongue biting. I don't need to pick up paper. Who cares? All right. Would you rather have to always watch your favorite shows live? So that's the commercials. Like when we grew up. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Something that you did for, you did for 20 years. years of your life. Or DVR them but never catch the very end because the DVR oh, cuts no. the show off too early. So let me ask you this. When's the last time you've had to watch a non-sporting event show? And watch all the commercials because there is a they, they do wow. a very specific thing now. Here, here's and the they, truth. Well, like I, almost never, almost never. The last time I watched, uh, I was watching Hulu, and I not the Hulu Plus, like the premium, but just regular Hulu. And they've got like I don't know two commercials in there, just like a a break and a half of a quick commercial. I'm I can't. Do that it. was it. I can't handle it. When we were kids. And we'd, we'd just watch a show. You'd pull out the TV guide. You'd turn it on. My brother and I would watch a show. Commercial time was like we'd get the Nerf ball out and start shooting hoops. It was just like a normal part of every show is you got the commercial break. You can run to the bathroom. You can get a snack. Now what they do is they front – they backload the commercials on these shows. Have you seen this? No. Mm, so what smart. they do is like if you go watch like This Is Us is a very popular TV show. The first commercial break – it's 60 seconds guaranteed. Two commercials back. Then, and it's a big break until that happens. Then there's a big break and the next commercial break. And that one's a little longer. Then it's a short break, longer commercials, shorter break, longest commercials, because you're committed to the show. So it actually becomes very horrible the longer you mm. watch, where you're just like, it's like four minutes of show, four minutes of, of commercials. But, but how do you, you not the see end the end of the show? Now is it okay because next week you're gonna get the recap? <laughs> we like maybe for you. I'm gonna take the commercials. I think we. I think we as a society. Oh no, are missing soapboxing on the commercial breaks. We need to have everything right now. Now, now we could use a little waiting. I would like to be advertised to. <laughs> you think I would like you to inject capitalism? I would like you directly? to sell me stuff. <laughs> I miss those old... I need to know what's out there. Oh, Look, commercials have gotten worse since they've gotten... Yeah. Like... I, the I want old, the romanticized Coke commercials. I mean, right now, Geico's current commercial run is, look at our old commercials we well, used to make. Because those are great commercials. Because they were great commercials because commercials and people watched them back great. then. So yeah, now all they, they have great. to do is remind you and you'll play the commercial in your head. Just That's think, a smart strategy. Just think about the Super Bowl. Okay, Super Bowl commercials were as good or not better than the Super Bowl right. like 10 years ago. And now people are still talking about every Super Bowl. Oh, what's the Super Bowl commercials going to be? But they they just, they, I feel like they're just phoned in now by yeah. comparison. I know the last time I watched commercials because it just happened. I was homesick. So when you're homesick, you, you're legally required as an American to watch The Price is Right. Yeah, daytime sure. television. So I watched that and... When's the last time you guys saw The Price is Right? It's been a while. The, the Target demo. Get your pets spayed and neutered. Yeah, the, the Target demo for Price is Right, according to the commercials, is people who are at least 65 years old at minimum because every single commercial is medication. That's, <laughs> and this is no exaggeration. That, that at least 90 plus percent of those commercials were for medication. And the best one, the best like, like the the side effects and things that they give you from these medicines, we're like, well, why would I take that at all? <laughs> it makes no sense. But there's a new screening it, it, you you can take. I believe it's for colon cancer. I'm not minimizing that, but it's a it's an at home test, and they say at the end of the commercial, they're like, there's a 13 percent chance that the, you either get a false positive or a false negative. 13 percent. Yeah. 13%. Go to the doctor and get the real test. <laughs> that's a little too high for my taste. So that's, after you get your result. outrageously too high. After you get your result, you go, I think I'm good. <laughs> like, <laughs> Here's well, what's ironic. I figured the other commercials during daytime television are from law firms seeking people who have taken some of the other medications. That's, oh, that's the other 10%. And died from Them it. Them and J.G. Wentworth. Yeah. Did Anyways. you take a home <laughs> test kit? So which one are you going with before we get into life advice? I oh. have to see the end of everything. I mean, yeah, sporting I'll, events. I'll sit through the commercials. Nothing is worse than when you add the extra time oh. on. 
When you add the extra time onto the DVR and then you still miss the end, do you know what that means? That means you missed a great ending because yes. it was going over time. Here's a little tip out there for the spitwads listening. Go to YouTube. Search for, like, 1980s commercials. They have these loops on YouTube. You can just watch all the old. It's very funny. It's funny. Grab a stick of juicy fruit. I mean, the taste is going to move you. Yeah. <laughs> Spitballers to the rescue. I, I you mean, say that, and I'm remembering all the Double Mint Twin commercials. Yeah, the Double Mint Juicy Fruit. I mean, these Mintos, people are they're freshness. hitting the they're hitting the slopes. See, oh. the jingle the jingle game is not what it used to be. Whoever, if somebody grew up and they're like, "Man, I'm going to make jingles my whole," I, I feel like that's a great point. The jingle life, it's not. You need the cheesy jingle. People don't get that. <sighs> Little my buddy, yeah, my, my buddy, buddy and me. me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, hey, I remember it because of the jingle. Oh, that's when that's when life was great. Spitballers jingle, work on it. All right, right, some guy from Twitter. That's what it's. uh, This is what's in quotes. Some guy from Twitter. I I like that our producer couldn't put his name in. Uh, Thanks, Al. How do you come back from you two when a waiter tells you to enjoy your food? Oh, Oh, this is classic. Because I've done. I'm gonna throw another one in there. The movie theater. I've done it a million times. Enjoy your show, (laughs) and you tell the concession person. You too. It happens everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, it doesn't even matter. And how do you come back from telling your waiter, enjoy the food as well? The thing, at least, about the movie is your interaction with the ticket taker, it's done. You never have to see that person again in your life if you want to. You can go... The waiter, you do. Yeah, the waiter's coming back. You don't follow it up with the real lung. You too... When you... Whenever you see a movie... (laughs) You too. No. Enjoy it. I got it. it. I got it. (laughs) Oh, good. They say... You say, you too... And then the, the, the waiter gives you the puzzled look, and then you follow with, it's my favorite band. <laughs> mm, there it is. That's where I thought you were going to. <laughs> now, the only have you listened to Joshua Tree? You ever heard Beautiful Day? <laughs> the only Great album. problem I have with that is that you are saying. I mean, it'd be a lie. That you 2 is your favorite band. <laughs> yeah, and I don't I'm think I want to live that life. No, when he looks puzzled at you, you say, yeah, we're on YouTube. Just subs- oh, subscribe on okay. YouTube. YouTube. Because <laughs> <laughs> that won't make it more awkward. <laughs> Enjoy you your too. food. YouTube <laughs> is a place where you can watch food videos. Too. I'll see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> How do you come back from that? Uh, yeah, see, what you don't want to do, and people don't realize it, is sometimes you're just done. You just got to let it go. Yep. You got to hope they didn't hear it. Because if you apologize for that, you're worse. You can't apologize I'm, for that. I'm really sorry for saying that. I didn't. I know you're not eating right now. No, you just you just laugh it off. You just you too. Yeah, what if the waiter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. What if you say you too, and the waiter's like, yeah, I had to skip my lunch break. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> he was just waiting there for you to feed him. Thanks. Like mouth Thanks open. Thanks a lot for oh, reminding me. I, I would tr- love to be eating. Can I jerk? <laughs> Splashed water in the maybe face. That, actually, no, maybe that's what you do. You say you too, and then you cut a bite, and you lift it up <laughs> to them. That's it. That's, that's the answer. Uh? You know, enjoy your food. Oh, you too. Here. Oh, my. And then you go with the airplane. <laughs> Here comes the airplane. Open up. You ever asked your own waiter or waitress if they wanted a bite of your food before? No. <laughs> I have never. No. Cool, me neither. Okay, but we should definitely try that together the next time we're at lunch. Well, we sometimes sh- the waiter or waitress is like, man, that, that looks great. I haven't tried that yet. Oh, you want a you bite? Know, it's new on the menu. It's a feature. <laughs> that would be so he- weird. Here's the thing. Here, Let me let me transition this, okay? Because I think we've covered the full gamut of what <laughs> you can do if this situation happens. If you're a waiter or a waitress, okay? Real question. And you, you just... Uh, your party's gone. The table, a lot of food on the table there. Right. You know where I'm going. Yes, oh, I know yeah. where you're going. Can you sample? Somebody, the... can you sample? Like, can no. you sample? And I don't mean yes. publicly. Let's say you bring it to the back. It's got to be on the Because the, the way risk back. is all on you, right? You you want to get the germs from. You want tetanus? You Sure, because tetanus is the real, it's the hotness right now. Yeah, look you, get it, you get it through rusty nails and eating old food. But can you sample that food? I, I would sample every single dish. There's no Is way that you true? could stop. Are you just saying that? I am saying that I would. Well, here's the deal. It would depend on who was eating it. 
Okay. Right? Like, if, what is if there they a left big, you a, a good tip or a, a bad tip? Does that make a difference? No, that doesn't make a difference. I feel like we can put this hypothetical just immediate to the test. Okay. Real life application. All right, let's do it. You're at a hotel. Okay. You're walking down uh, the hallway. See, here's the problem. I know where you're going because I've thought about it. <laughs> and what? There it is. Someone's half-eaten cheeseburger. Oh, sitting on the little. They put it outside. Down on the tray because they got the room service. They mm-hmm. were very fancy. Mm-hmm. How how fancy are you? <laughs> zero <laughs> percent. Take, there z- is a zero percent chance on the that cheeseburger I, that I would walk by. At, right. Like, okay. Well, what is it? Need? French fries. A fr- uh, gra- okay. Quick, French fries. And, the percent goes up. Gravity. It goes a little higher. <laughs> here's the thing. It's a very, very low percentage, zero or one percent. If I'm just walking down the hall and I see it. Now, if I'm walking down the hall and deep down that hall, I see a door open and someone put that right outside. Oh, okay. So it's fresher. It's fresher. You I don't want to take bringing... the chance of this thing's been out here for three hours. But if they're putting it out right now. I mean, you can heat check it. You know, just put the hands You know, up at the end it. of the day, I'm not eating that because I'm not indigent. <laughs> Like that's really. Why I would order my own room service. Well, I would just eat some food oh, somewhere I've, else. I'm with Jason. I've thought about it so oh, many times because it have, looks good, or because yes. room service is so expensive. You know what you're getting. Both of those things are are accurate. Oh my gosh! All right, here's another question from Jake. Jake sent this one in off of our Twitter account at Spitballers Pod. He says, "I may quote park as far from the store to avoid door dings person." Well, my girlfriend is a park as close as possible, even if it risks door dings person. Which one of us is right? The driver. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, the problem solved. Yeah. Wipe my hands and walk. If you're, if driving, you're driving, if you're driving, you you can park where you want to park. It's radio station rules. You're saying yes. Well, what, I guess. What if she is driving your is car? Driving your car. You or vice look. versa. You're driving her her baby, and she doesn't want you to park up close. She's a, Who's afraid of... Is this a thing? Borland, you seem like you're a man. <laughs> Last time I checked. And some, some men are very into their vehicles, yeah. right? Um, like, uh, you're a man. Would you... Do, is Dording's concern a real thing? No. No, it's not. It's, it is. It's, it's definitely a real thing. But do for you me, think about it, Mike? You have a nice I do. vehicle. I do. I do. But I only think about it in terms of not how close I am because I'm going to park in between two people. It's that person's hugging the line. I've been known to do that. Yes, you have been known to. <laughs> yeah, park we need to that way. But for me, it's just so it's on that. We it's, need to address how bad of a parker you are, Andy. You drove a small car for I don't know thirty years, and then you got a longer car and have no idea that it, it is parked. <laughs> differently so when you pull into a parking lot i'm telling you one of your tires usually the back one all my is muscle on memory, the line like if you talk about teaching an old dog new tricks it applies here all my muscle memories related to parking a compact and i've never i haven't relearned i've gotten worse over time at parking i don't know how that's possible. i suck at parking you rarely fix it <laughs> you could just yeah. back out i will and be honest fix it most you're like, i'm the, good most of the time that's i ask of, you guys it's most, a matter of pride i ask you guys Hey, do I need to fix this? And ninety percent of the time, you guys go, "Eh, you're fine." Yeah, because yep. we're not worried about door dings. You're not willing to car, train me. You're not willing to train me up in the way that I should go. Yeah. Now, Look, I think the answer to this question is you shouldn't worry about door dings. Well, let's make it. Let's change it because I thought the question was going the the direction I've seen it before, which is, are you a hunter? That, I was going to bring that up, or are you a settler? So a hunter is willing to go in and out of a few rows to find that lucky spot, which obviously they exist, right? People in the front, they leave as well. The settler decides, hey, I'm just going to take the first spot I can get. It doesn't matter how far it is because I'm going to get up to the front maybe quicker than somebody that finds that close spot. Yeah, I I am absolutely 100% a settler, and this comes down to a matter of practicality. This is one of the most contentious parts of my marriage is the hunter settler problem? Uh, she she's a oh. hunter. She's oh, a hunter. she will. My wife would hunt for fifteen minutes for a spot. For a spot. Is she a waiter too? If she sees somebody with the oh, lights yeah. on, yes. Oh, I oh, hate she, that. Not only would she be a waiter, she will wait. She'll, she she she'll, will make the line form. She will. She does, she's a re- the line behind her doesn't matter to it's her. It's inconsequential. Oh. she is waiting for that spot. Is she also a follower? 
as in like, oh, oh if a person's, person's walking, walking out? out. Yeah, 100%. So, oh, no. I'm so happy my wife is not the topic of conversation right now. <laughs> oh, but dude, like my wife, will, she can't be mad. Dude, dude, what, she, she won't be mad about this. She, she'll be like, that's how it is. This. She's when, like, yeah, when, I will do this. When she, I am at Costco. She's which got is, a Facebook group for people like her. <laughs> Costco, you know, the, the the one that we have nearest us is the busiest Costco oh, on, on the planet. The planet. Yeah, you because it's Costco. Well, sure, it's probably the same near you. But it's just unbelievable. You can't find a spot, and so there's always waiters. There's always the, the people putting their blinker on for yeah. your spot when you're backing out. When I roll up to my car with my three children and a oh, cart full yeah. of like $7,000 worth of food, and it's just overflowing... And they start with the blinker. Oh, man. I'm ready to go to war. I am ready to kill. Yeah. Do you go slower to make them pay? I have absolutely done that before. <laughs> I have done multiple tactics. I've gone slower. I have literally looked at the them. Glance. Looked at them, pointed to the cart, and gone, what are you doing? <laughs> I have, you're going to be here for 12 minutes. I am not speeding up before Point at your you. kids. Yes. Point at the Point. car. Come go like, <laughs> going to yes. take a Point while. Watch. Get it moving, Grandpa. <laughs> you ain't waiting on this car. But then there are the other times. You should sit down on the tailgate and just tie your shoe or something. <laughs> yes. Just like, mm -mm. There are the times where the pressure's on, though, and it I feel bad. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and that's, then it's like. That's the worst. Oh, no. the This is the worst, worst part. Car comes in, usually puts the blinker on when they see you got two things left, right? Okay, you got, okay, you're almost done. But then the cart retrieval place it's is a hard. mile away. <laughs> oh, that's your and, and I'm like, okay, see you later, dude. <laughs> and I'm just walking away from the car with the cart going like to two aisles <laughs> over. And he's just waiting there on nobody. You should roll that cart out and put it right in front of his car and just go get in your car. <laughs> Dude, that's what he's I just roll the empty car. So he has to get and out. And then back out and leave. Not my oh. cart, not my problem. Hey. That's what I was hey, saying. Put this away. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's just that's the price you pay. That is too funny. All right, we're gonna get into our draft. Uh. <laughs> the Spitballers draft. All right, we've got a fun one today. I think Jason gets to kick it off, right? He does. Isn't he number one? Last week it wasn't pretty. Mike, Mike wiped, uh, mopped the floor with us. Wiped I, the floor. I don't know. He did something with the floor. We were the floor. He was were, the boot. <laughs> I mean, it was. It you was always not, wiped that floor with the boot. <laughs> and we, and it was not pretty. Today we are. We've decided we're going to do a draft, and it's going to be the coolest vehicles. I got that word out there. The coolest vehicles in film and television. Okay. Okay. So you've it's got cool. Uh, cool vehicles. Yeah, there are uh, many iconic vehicles, cars, planes, boats, whatever planes, from trains, automobiles, uh, from movies. The famous vehicles, and we're going to draft them. I think. Uh, I think it will be very interesting. And Jason gets the first pick, and I think that will be very interesting. I am. I am quite happy to have and the first Borland, pick. Borland, you're going to write think these down over there, right? Okay. I think there are two top tier picks. Yeah, which there, sucks that I'm pick three. Yes, there are. I, I, I think there's a couple. Oh, I'm going to mess be, this up. There's a couple that could be in the conversation, but there's one. Yeah, it's that the has to happen. Yes. It's the coolest. Oh, it's literally. Don't. It's literally. No, you're fine, Andy. There, because there's one that's cooler than one, the one you're thinking about. No. It's one foot away from Andy. Andy is picking next. Wow. Andy You're is taking that? I am absolutely taking the DeLorean. All I, right. hate, I hate you so much. The man. DeLorean has. Mike told me I was safe. The and DeLorean I wanted it. has the, the, the butterfly doors. It's got the time travel. It can fly. It can drive. Are those called butterfly doors? No. What are, <laughs> what are those? Uh. uh Fal are those falcon doors? I think so. I, ju I just never heard them called butterfly doors before. That's probably because they're not. <laughs> it's because there's never been a butterfly door. No, I just don't even know. It's butterfly I'm kisses. <laughs> it's not butterfly that's, doors. That's falcon old. wing door. Falcon wing door, Borland. Thank you. Thank you. Falcon wing door. Butterfly doors so you're basically or vertical doors are a type of door that's sometimes oh. seen on high-performance cars. So those those are the ones that don't open out. They just open straight up. I would imagine butterfly Wait, doors the are the ones, ones that open that, straight up are suicide doors. Yeah, well, that's what I. Butterflies I've would be the ones that, like, the front two open this way, the back two open this way, to where they open the same. They oh, have like, the same closing point. Like you got the 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 fancy Rolls Royce. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think they are. Anyway, you're yeah. you're ruining my DeLorean. life here. 
Yeah, That's I've great. got the DeLorean. I'm oh, happy with Andy, that. Andy, mess this up, please. I'm taking the Batmobile. Dang, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had two high-profile picks. I, I assumed I'd get DeLorean. Uh, I did, too. I'm taking the Batmobile. I don't know if there's a more iconic uh, film, movie, vehicle uh, no, than the, that. The Batmobile is the jam. Yeah, so I'm taking the Batmobile. Uh, when we grew up, it was uh, the Michael Key. I mean, there's been variations of it. Right, but I, you know, I picture that one from you get the you get them all, but the the Michael Keaton one, the fire coming out the back, he's flying through the the woods, turbines to speed. Oh, and then he shields shields up. (laughs) I mean, come on, no, that's great. No shields on the DeLorean, Jason. No, I don't need them where I'm going. (laughs) Don't even need roads. (laughs) I don't even need roads. All right, so uh, Mike, you get two picks, so that can make up for not getting one of those. Yeah, it's it's nice to have the two picks. But the you br- said there were two. There's two. You guys got them. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. you you picked the coolest ones because now there's a, like a whole group of them, and they're all cool. But you have the absolute cool ones. Uh, I'm gonna start it off with uh, a vehicle that it, it can't do anything cool like sure. your guys' vehicles, but it looks awesome, extremely iconic. I'm taking Ecto One. I am taking the Ghostbusters. Oh. Oh. The Ghostbusters station wagon. It's on my short list for sure. It's that's, just that's a great. cool car. Um, and now for the second one, though, that's that's where things get tough because there are two, nay, three that I really want, and I don't expect anything will get back to me. So I am going to take – I'm going to take – Kit from Night Rider. Oh, that's literally what I. Oh, just did wrote you write down. that down? Okay. I'm gonna have to scratch it out. That would not have got back from you. Yeah, well, it was. Good. It was the next one on my list. So now you, it was I not coming to back know, to Jason. I want you to know. I would have actually drafted Night Rider, which is the name of the car. Is it to me? Oh, no. <laughs> to me. I, when you said Kit, I was like, Oh, good. He's not taking the Night Rider. <laughs> and then you said from Night Rider, and I went, Oh, I'm an idiot. I know it's a car draft, but I am taking. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> I want that man. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good pick. Uh, that would have been my next pick, Mike. So well done. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to take the General Lee. Mm. All right. I'm going to take. What is that? Uh, Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, that's oh, the, the, the Dodge Charger from Dukes of Hazard. I mean, when you think it's of that show. It's always doing jumps. It's doing jumps. Uh, it's what the cool kids would be riding around in, <laughs> solving crimes. Solving crimes? I don't know. It's cool. There's other cars if you wanted to solve crime. That's true. I'm going to go with the right. uh, the General Lee from Dukes of Hazzard. Oh, got the man. Batmobile. So I, stupid. I'll tell you what, guys. There are so many that I want here, far more than I thought I was going to have, but I've, I've, well, already, two. I've already got my two picks. I am going fun, and I am going awesome. Okay, I'm going both directions. I am going to love my team adding to the DeLorean. I'm taking the Millennium Falcon. Okay, uh, yeah. Come on, give me them Star Wars votes. Yeah, that's a great pick. I can go to space. I can run the something parsips and the... the <laughs> parsnips. You, you don't the deserve parsnips. Star Wars you don't, votes. I do not, but I will get them. Because it's I drafted the... Castle the, Run. The, in, yep, that's what, I, that's what I can do. You eat your parsnips. <laughs> because I got the Millennium... I got the parsleys and, and the, the parsnips. <laughs> Um, look, the Millennium Falcon. This is talking about a tainted draft. It's mine. Panderer. And I love it. It's not just a panderer. It's an awesome, super fast spaceship that is current in pop culture. I'm taking it. But the, the next <laughs> it's one. It's cool, man. It's happening. The Millennium Falcon. Oh, man. This next one is really, really tough. I thought you had your two picks. I do. But I wonder if this one could get back to me. But oh. I like this is one where I want it to be my fourth pick. Because it's a great fourth pick. I'm reaching here, but I also don't want to lose it. It's just too important to me. So I'm going to take it. I'm taking the shagging wagon from Dumb and Dumber. Give me that giant dog, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, look, it's cool. There is a 0.0% chance that I would have drafted it. Would you have drafted that, Andy? <laughs> no. and I See, sh- I knew I, I should have used that I as my should've. fourth. It's an I, awesome look, vehicle. I thought about it because it's fun. <clears throat> I mean, it's a dog car. It does a dog pee thing. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It can even fly, if you remember the movie. <laughs> uh, For a little while, when it goes wait, over a really it's fast not bump. flying. That's falling with style. That's fine. <laughs> it's got the style of a beautiful dog. I mean, the memories made 
in that van. We can pick up hitchhikers, okay? Pick them up. Look, if you're listening to this podcast, I don't recommend you do that. You don't recommend they listen to oh, don't <laughs> pick, uh, picking up sure. hitchhikers. Sure, sure. All right. Well, you took uh, what were your two then? My two were the Millennium Falcon and the Shaggin Wagon from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, I mean the Millennium Falcon was very smart. I'll it's be great honest pick. with you. Thank great you. pick. Um, man. So I've got the uh, General Lee and I've got the Batmobile. I think I need to take to the skies. Oh. And uh, I'm going to jump into uh, exactly what Goose and Maverick jumped into. I'm going to oh. take the uh, aircraft from Top Gun. <laughs> the aircraft? <laughs> the, the aircraft? The F something or rather. The, you couldn't even, the, you couldn't even call it a fighter jet? I, just, <laughs> I'll take the uh, plane. From Top uh, I'll I take had to Top have been Gun an F-16. Plane. I'm taking the F-16 from Top Gun, assuming that's what it was. <laughs> I got a little... I, it might have been a... Uh, oh, that's funny. Might have been an F-14. Might have been an F-18. There was an F involved. Who knows? Borland, do you know what... It's an F-14. The What, the Tomcat? All right. Maverick, but the gunman F-14 Tomcat, he flew. All right. According well, to Google. Look, just put Top Gun fighter jet, all right? That's what I'm taking. That's the point. I'm not getting. You guys aren't going to jump into the Coliseum and ruin my pick like King Triton. <laughs> right? He's still flopping around down there. Yeah, I don't care if he can give himself legs. Mike, uh. it's uh, it's on to you. And you've got a couple, a couple decisions to make here. I'm trying to stall with these words I'm saying out loud. Are you in good shape? I, I, I'm doing all right because I have one absolute that I'm going with. The you guys did not take anything that was actually on my list. I mean, those were fantastic picks. So the shame on me. The first one I'm going to take, I mean, it's a vehicle, but he's also a super cool robot, and he's, I like it, he's a unique yellow vehicle, so I'm going to take mm. Bumblebee. Oh, all right, all right. I'm going to take right. Bumblebee from, clever. from the Transformers, and now I am torn between, can, can I've got I one, a, I've got one I rec- want real bad. Can I make a recommendation? I've, it's probably not anything I'm thinking of, Andy, but what? Yeah, don't recommend nothing. I, I, I would throw out there. The Titanic, <laughs> okay, beautiful vehicle can get you from one continent to the other. Has a lot of people, Mike. I think you should take it. All right, I see what you're doing here. I agree with my uh, my colleague. <laughs> Nothing could ever go wrong with that pick. Oh man, and we're no, on no. Mike's. No, 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 pick. no, no. We're good. I just I we're know always I'm taking. on Mike's pick. Well, that's because it's the best pick. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take the. My car shaken, not stirred. So I'm oh, going to take, oh, okay. take the Aston Martin from the James Bond movies. <laughs> All right. I'm just thinking of you trying to describe it not as the Aston Martin, but as the, uh, what did I say, the aircraft? <laughs> <laughs> the automobile from. <laughs> All right. I will take the Model T. So, Borland, what do I have so far? I have Batmobile. Generally. And the generally aircraft. you have the Batmobile <laughs> and the, the fighter from jet from Top Gun. <laughs> the aircraft. <laughs> you just shut up. All right, I'm closing it out with the Starship Enterprise. Oh, oh I had pick. so I knew these I was, voyages are closing with a great pick, is what I think. It is. That's a, that's a great pick. Yeah, I mean, star I, date. I win the poll when I yeah. when I look at what I actually want to pick. Okay, it's almost all starships. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, I, I win all cars. You am did. I the last? You're the final pick. I'm the final pick, so I can say whatever I want. I you always can. I want you know. Look, the Battlestar Galactica, love it. Uh, Serenity, the uh, the the spaceship from Firefly. I mean, yeah, I would take good, all. Of, I would take all of these. Picks. But I feel like, and I wanted the uh, I wanted the Starship Enterprise, but because I took the Millennium Falcon, which is the best. Of all the starborn ships, I uh, yeah. go on. I mean, obviously, I'm going to debate you on that, but go on. He's he is correct. But I will say the Millennium this: Millennium Falcon is so much better than the Starship Enterprise. When I first heard about the draft, okay, well, before torpedo. before looking up and reminding myself of all these awesome vehicles, there were only a few, I think, three or four vehicles that immediately popped into mind. One was, of course, the DeLorean. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the Scooby Doo van yep, that is was that was on my list of like it's just cool but incredibly cool. iconic, popular, uh, and and that is very close to coming. But Have I'm gonna you go consider with the, the Hindenburg. <laughs> yes, I, it was between <laughs> kind the of Hindenburg known as the and the Air Titanic. Titanic. Yeah, uh, but I am actually 
Going to go with something that I think is a little cooler. Loved the show. It should have been drafted, or it could have, maybe not should have, could have been drafted for theme song hmm. on the do 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 I was going to, it's on my list. I was like, there's another van. Yep, and that's the van I'm taking. Give me that black van with the red stripe, the A-team van. Nice. Is fantastic. No, that's good. I. Do you guys ever remember the show called Airwolf? Nope. Any of you guys? No, I remember a I remember a video game. I remember too. The video Wolf. game was based on uh, the, the the television show, and it was the coolest helicopter television show because this was a helicopter, but it had like like its legs went up in inside, so it was like very aerodynamic. So what what else did you guys have on your your short? List? I had the Blues Mobile from uh, from uh, Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers. So I had Air Force One. Uh, the Mad Max car. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the ones I was really debating on the on my last pick are the car from Mad Max. Uh, that's a good car. Lightning McQueen. Yeah, thought about oh, that too. Oh, that's a good one. And the car. I don't even know what you would call it, but from the Jetsons. Hmm. The, yeah. Their little spaceship. Their little spaceship thing. thing. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I, you know what look, about the the Flintstones? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the the one that you have to. Move with your move feet? yourself, yeah. yeah and I, w- I would throw Talking out about bunions. Like I like the, I like the really famous iconic cars more so than just the like. Oh, by itself, it's cool. So, like the Jurassic Park SUV. Oh, you I would love that one. Like that, <laughs> it's, it's just an SUV that's wrapped for yeah, Jurassic Park. But it's, but that's what I mean. I love these that's, iconic. You're, it also you're drafting. Chill. It's we're, we're picking coolest. Yeah, I mean, it's look, cool. look, my A team van. It's a GMC. Yeah, mini my, van. mine's a '69 Charger for General Lee. What about your aircraft? <laughs> <sighs> well, here we go. What do we learn on the show today, gentlemen? And by the way, this will always, as all the drafts are, be on Twitter at Spitballers Pod. You can go vote um, on Instagram at Spitballers Pod. I have what I learned. What, do you, what did you guys learn? I learned learn? that not only is Andy a heightist, but I am. Anything under him, he thinks it's the same. So he thinks the same that, height. He thinks that five eight is five eleven. That's correct. I I learned that Jason, despite his best efforts at convincing me otherwise, he has an over oversized tongue. He cl- <laughs> clearly has too big of a tongue for his mouth if he's biting it all the time. And I learned that the next time anyone wants to wait for me in a in a parking lot, I yeah. am leaning up against the against the vehicle. And I'm just letting them. I'm, you got to put the cart in front of him. You put the cart in front Pull of him. Pull your camera out and record them. Yeah. They'll, we'll they'll the run. Watch they'll on. run. Thank you for listening to the show. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers Podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.